In the last video, we left at tuple unpacking part, where we unpacked the elements of tuple in separate variables. But there was only few elements to be unpacked. But suppose we have tuple containing student name, course, and the semester grades. And we want to unpack these tuples to calculate average grade. Now creating 8 separate variables for each grade is not feasible, right? But by looking at this tuple, one thing we can say that all the grades are in a sequence written after the second element. So we want to store all the grade value in a separate variable. This is where the star expression comes into play. This grade variable will contain all the elements written after the second element in that tuple. I will give you some example while coding, so don't worry if you are not getting it right now. To learn how to use start variable, we will create a tuple with 10 elements. And then we decided to drop the first and the last value of tuple and only look at the middle element. To do this task, we will create a variable for first element and then we will store all the values excluding the last value by creating a start variable and variable for our last value. And then we will assign our tuple to it. Now let's look at all three variable one by one. You can see that now we are able to unpack a sequence of value in a single variable. As another use case, suppose you have a user record that consists of name, email address followed by an arbitrary number of phone numbers. It would not be feasible to create a different variable for each phone number, but we could unpack these phone number in a single variable like this. It is worth noting that the phone number variable will be a list, regardless of how many phone number are unpacked, so we don't need to perform any kind of additional type checking. The start variable can also be the first one in the list. For example, say you have a sequence of values representing your company's sales figure for last 8 quarters. If you want to see how most recent quarter stakes up to the average of the first 7, then you can create a start variable to store the first 7 quarter and the current quarter variable to store the last value. Now we will compute the average of trailing quarters and then we will print the trailing average and the current quarter value. You can see the result. Now let's discuss about dictionary data structure. A dictionary data structure is a mapping where each key is mapped to a value. Suppose you have a fruit shop where you want to map all the fruits with their respective price. So in order to create a dictionary, we will have to use braces holding the fruit name as the key and the price as the value of that key. Our dictionary will look like this. In order to grab some value, we will use the key inside the square bracket as we did in the list slicing part. To grab all the items from dictionary, you can use items method. So it has given the list of tuples containing keys and the corresponding values. And since it is the list, we can also iterate over it using the for loop like this. Here we got the output as tuples. But if you want to print the keys and the values separately, then you can unpack those tuples like this. See, now we got the output in unpacked format. Now let's discuss about function. To understand the function in layman's, let's take an example of ATM machine which have a function say f of x which takes some data as an input and after processing those inputs, it gives you some sort of output. It may be some cache or any message like insufficient balance. So this function has to perform different kinds of tasks like checking balance, which includes conditional statements on comparison operators, then evaluating cache for you. 
In Python, we define a function with def keyword followed by function name and the set of inputs in parentheses if required. So first, we will write a very basic function which will only print the text hello world. We are done with defining our function. In order to call this print text function, we will do this. Note that we have to use parenthesis after function name in order to execute that function. If you do not use parenthesis then python interpreter will show you that it is a function but it will not show any kind of error. Now we will write a function which takes a person's name as an input and then it greets that person by saying hello. Now we will call this greet function with the person's name. Function helps you to avoid repetition of code in your program. Suppose you have to calculate area of a circle, then you have two choices. Either write the code to compute the area every time you need it, or else write a function and call it wherever you need it. So in order to show you one more example, we will create a function which will take radius as an input and return the area. For that, we need our math module for value of pi and then we will return pi times the radius square. Now we will write a function for our ATM machine example we have discussed few minutes back. We will define our function with two inputs, the original pin and the balance on that card. Inside the function we will ask for pin from the user. Then we will check if the entered pin is correct or not. If the pin is correct, it will ask for the amount the user wants to withdraw. Then it will check if the entered balance is available on the card or not. If it is true, our function will print withdrawal successful. Else it will print balance not available. And if the entered pin was wrong, it will print please enter a correct pin. Now we will call this function with original pin and balance. First time we will enter incorrect pin. Run it again and use correct pin. We will run it for the last time with over withdrawal amount. Our function is working fine. Notice that in this function we have nested conditional statements so be careful with the alignment of conditional statements and the indentation. That's all for this video. If you face any problem in code or want to ask something then post your question in comment section below. Our next video will be on lambda expression. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet then do subscribe it and hit the bell icon. And if you feel my videos are informative for you then hit the like button as well.